So let's get started. You'll need a countersink bit, a regular wood drill bit, and some wood screws. Of course, you will also need a planing bit for the router. Here are the plans to make the routing jig. You can simply pause the video or come back to this at any time, and I will also be labeling each video segment with the parts you need. We start out by countersinking our sled rails and our sled together. So here I just quickly sunk in uh, two locations on each side and then drilled through both pieces of wood to give myself a pilot hole. This allowed the screws to go in quite easy and we weren't worried about splitting the wood. And of course, we are now getting a very smooth finish at 90 degrees. Next, flip it over and you're going to do the same on the other side. Measure twice just because this part is very important as it will be sliding along your jig. Once that's finished up, we're going to simply measure out a few locations where we can then countersink some more screws in to make the sides of this routing jig sled. If you've never countersunk a screw before, you might wonder how deep you need to do this, and you just need to cover that silver part, or in essence, so that the head of your screw doesn't stick out from the wood. Again, ensure that you have that 90 degrees flush on your sled, and you're going to drill in those pilot holes. I chose to do three on each side here and then just simply put in those wood screws nice and easy, ensuring that I'm not going to split that wood. Then I just made sure that we are indeed at 90 degrees and flipped over the sled and did the same on the other side. Your completed sled will look like this and your router should slide back and forth quite easily if you measured correctly. The next step is to prepare your base plate, and again, we're doing the same process here. 90 degrees, countersunken screws, and really ensuring that we're at 90 degrees before we sink in those screws. When you drill your pilot holes, ensure that you go deeper or as deep as your screw, because even if you drilled a pilot hole, if you didn't do it all the way the length of your screw, you still are at risk of splitting that MDF or wood. The screw should go down quite easily. I'd recommend using a lower drill power just to ensure that you're not going to strip the screws either. And once that's done, you basically have your completed jig. So you have the sliding sled and you have the base. Again, make sure that your router fits. And you can see here that we have both the vertical and horizontal motions covered. This next step isn't a necessity, but I took some wax and basically put that on the top of the rails and that just allowed it to slide a bit easier. Now we're going to put the planing bit into use uh, in a different way. So we basically just use the plunge router and slowly take passes out of the top of your sled and you're basically making the hole where your planing bit will eventually come through to do the planing. One incredibly important thing is that you make sure that your piece that you're going to plane will not move. So in this case, I put weights around the wood and I ensured that my planing bit will not contact those weights because that would be bad. Once you've locked that piece down in whatever way, um, you can basically take passes in the correct direction that your router specifies and try to take off as little wood as possible in the beginning just to get a feel for it. And you can kind of gauge, you know, one to two millimeters you can take off with no problem with this planing bit. And you'll find that you have an extremely smooth piece of wood afterwards that only needs a little sanding to get it to its final destination. Hope that was helpful, guys. I will see you next time.